Hi, welcome. My name is Pete, the music teacher. I'm here to show you a sort of whistle stop tour of Guitarist Way, book two, the orange book. Okay, hopefully you've completed book one. If not, there are there is a video out there uh, uh, with me talking my way through that. So, when we open up Guitarist Way, book two, we start on page two, and we're introduced to something called quavers. They aren't just cheesy crisps. They're also a kind of note. Quaver notes last half a beat. All right, so I count them like this. One and two and three and four. And if you look in your book, it says count and tap. One plus two plus one plus two plus. Well, I say one and two and, okay. So where it says count and tap, I'm just gonna tap on my guitar. I'm gonna tap my way through the first one. Number one, count and tap. One and two and 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 one and two. And so crotchets are one, two, quavers are one and two, and minims are one and two and see the difference? You should know these by now. Another way to remember that first line is this tea, tea, coffee, coffee, tea, coffee, milk. Tea, tea, coffee, tea, coffee, coffee, milk. You've got to say milk like that or it doesn't count. Right, the next bit, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually play my low E string. Okay, coffee, 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 tea, tea, coffee, coffee, tea, 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 coffee, tea, tea, coffee, milk. There you go. Now, I've got a prop for the next song, Peas Pudding Hot. Now, in these hard times when people are buying a lot of tin food, I found this, peas pudding. This next song is about this. Uh, it goes, peas pudding hot, peas pudding cold, peas pudding in the pot, nine days old. So just imagine this, a big pot of peas pudding, and all you get to eat is this for nine days, right? But that's the song. I don't know where it comes from. I, I'm, in my head, I'm imagining it's a Victorian song. Anyway, peas pudding hot, the song is. Song number three. Two beats in a bar, but we're going to be using crotchets, quavers, and minims. So think of this. This is the song. Peas pudding hot, peas pudding cold, peas pudding in the pot, nine days old. Tea, coffee, milk, tea, coffee, milk, tea, coffee, 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 tea. I'll do that again. Tea, coffee, coffee, tea, 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 milk. See the rhythm. So it's G, string three open, A, string three, fret two, B, string two open, and C, string two, fret one. Now, if you're not sure what any, whereabouts any of these notes are, get your yellow book, look in the very back, it's got a list of all the notes you need for most of this book. Okay, so P's putting on. Make sure you use your fingers to pick the strings. Use your middle finger for A, your first finger for C. All right, great. Let's move on to London's Burning now. London's Burning. You're gonna use your fingers to play the whole thing, even the low D. So we're gonna use quavers and crotchets. Quaver, quaver, crotchet, crotchet. Okay, now the rhythm goes. London's Burning, London's Burning. Four parts to this. There's the London's burning bit. D D G G D D G G. So you just play that bit twice. It's just string four open, string three open. Make sure you get the rhythm right. Okay. The next part uses the same rhythm, but it goes A A B B A A B B. Straight forward. Then we're going to accent the note. That's what this little greater than symbol is above the D. Holding the D with your third finger, nice and loud. Fire, 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 fire. So it's one short D, one long D. One short D, one long D. Then we're gonna use the same string three times but in three different places. D, C, nice and quickly, then B, B. This is tricky. If you're lazy and you're using one finger to change between the two, stop it. No. Get used to using finger three, 
Finger one. Do it now. Learn it now. B, C, B, B. Okay? There you go. Arnold tells you use different fingers for different frets. Then the song goes back to normal. Okay? When you play it, play it a few times, basically. If there's more of you at home playing it, play it together. One of, one of you start on this, and when the other person's got to that part of the song, you start in the beginning, and you can play what we call a two-bar canon. All right, let's have a look at the next page. Next page, we're going to be learning a new note on string four. It's called F, string four, fret three. Say string four, fret three, over and over again really fast. Good tongue twister. String four, fret three. All right, chant. Use this D, E. D, E, and F. They're all on string four. Open, fret two, fret three. So chant only uses those. The notes are above in the little note dictionary. It's just D, E, F, E, D, D, E, E, F, F, E, E, D, E, F, E, D, F, E, E, D, then repeat. Simple as that. There's some accompaniments to go with that. If you've got a buddy at home who has an instrument, why don't they join in with you? Simple as that. Study is the next pit. Piece number eight. It just goes D, E, F, G, A, G, F, E. Repeat. D, E, F, G, A, G, part two. It's just to get you used to playing D, E, F, G, and A, because you'll need them in the next bit, which is a rock and roll 12 bar blues. D, D, E, E, quavers, D, 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 E, E, D, D, E, E, F, E, D, that's the first line. Second line uses the same idea but starts on G, string three. G, G, A, A, quavers, G, 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 A, A, D, D, E, E, F, E, D, then he goes A, 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 G, 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 D, E, F, E, D, A, do you play it all again and skip to part two. There are chords to go along with it and the accompaniment. So I'm going to just play them for you. if you want to go back and have a go when you're confident with it. Give it a try if you want to. La Mantovana is the next one. We're going to be learning A, B and C. When we combine A, B and C with D, E, F and G and A, you've got yourself the Aeolian mode which is on page 16 in your book. But let's start off, let's unpack it all. A, B and C are on string 5. We know A already from the first book. B, fret 2. C, fret 3. D, E and F same pattern but on string four so it's a b c d e f practice that for a bit a b c use your middle finger for fret two third finger for fret three this one doesn't work in this song this one doesn't either okay the entire piece of music only uses those six notes a b c d e f nice and slow a b c d e piece. <clears throat> so you play the first eight bars twice, then you go to the end. DC alfine means go back to the beginning, 
and play the first eight bars again. That is it. Oh. Nice and tuned. Next we're going to learn C major scale. Starting with this low C, which we just learned today, string 5, fret 3. C, D, D, F, G, A, B, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. Learn it. Learn it off by heart. All right, if you do grade 1, that's in the grade 1 test, all right? You need You'd have to memorise it, so get in there early. You might not do grade one till like the end of book two or book three. So, Frere Jaca uses all the notes we've been doing in the C major scale, plus a new low note, low note, new note G, string six, fret three, right? In the last line, it actually says new note G. Everything you need is here. Once again, if you're not sure of these notes, use the back of your uh, uh, book one with the note finder. Match the notes up. I'm going to run through it for you. Frere Jacques is really straightforward. It's two bar phrases. It says C, D, E, C, then repeat. E, F, G, repeat. Next bit. G, A, G, F, E, C. I'll un unpack that slowly. Four quavers, two crotches. La, 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 la. So go slow with the last two notes. G and A and G on string three. Then we're going to go F and E on string four. And then, look, I'm using the same finger I used for F. To go to C. I'll show you that again. Okay. Don't rush it. Make sure you play each note clearly. Then C G C C G C. Using the same finger, moving between the two. Hop. Okay. Go at any speed you can. Don't play faster than you can play without making mistakes. I'm sure there's a better way of explaining that. Only play as fast as you can play without making any mistakes. There you go. You can tell this is unscripted and unedited. I love it. Right, the star next. Now, if you did book one, you did the star. All right, this really, they put this in the book, I think, to get you used to playing your low notes. So it's a familiar tune. G, G, D, D, E, E, D, C, C, B, B, A, A, G. D, D, C, C, B, B, A. D, D, C, C, B, B, A. G, G, D, D, E, E, D. C, C, B, B, A, B, G. Simple as that. That's the star. All right, enough said. Again, pause at any point. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be just playing this and trying to play along. You should be pausing after each song and doing it as a lesson. Right, Polish dance. Enough of the low notes. We're going to play high notes now. Fret five. Go to F. F, 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 E, D. Pause. Right. One, two, three Fs, but then a quaver E straight away. So it goes. Now I'm using one finger to do the F, then opening to E. And while that's opening, my third finger springs into action like a ninja. Ooh. F, 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 E, D, E, 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 D, 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 C, B, A. So D, D, three of those. Straight to C. That's quite tricky. You might not even be able to stretch yet, but just hop. Like that, and then middle finger for A. a. Now, if you've watched the first video and I've told you all about how it's important to use correct fingers for each fret, this is why. Alright? Take it slow though. Alright? I don't mind how slow you play this if you play it right. That is the best way to learn. Slow mo. Slow. <laughs> Of course, you could just click the slow down button on YouTube, or I could carry on doing the slow voice. Anyway, C C C B C D D D D D D C D E E E F F F E D E E E D C D D D C B A A. Simple as that. Polish dance. Go for it. All the notes you need. It uses A B C D E and F. And A. Now the great thing about this tune is it can be played as a duet with On the March, which is low notes. Polish chance or high notes, uh, On the March or low notes. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just play all of Polish dance now as a performance. Then I'm going to do all of On the March straight after it. And then once you've learned either one, you can use me as a sort of 
buddy to play along with. So here we go. It does at the end, but I'm not redoing it. Here we go, on the march. Now I've heard students doing this, they, they got together and they played a duet, so look, use those two performances as a way to duet with them. Once you've learned the pieces, take your time, there is no rush. I'm doing this video for the whole book, but no one piece of music in this book is more important than the next. Don't think that you've got to get to the end of the book to be good. You can be amazing at that first piece, first page in this book. Go for it. Okay, on the march, uses A, B, C, D, E, F, but also uses G. I think that's it. Yeah, A, B, C, D, E, F, and then melody, which we've learned recently. Um, it's got repeats. You repeat the first two lines, then you play the last two lines twice, then you go back and play the first two lines again. Simple as that. Lovely piece of music. Uh, again, make use of the, the uh, note dictionary in the back of book one, because all those notes are in there for you. All right, remember the number in the circle is the string, the number next to it is the fret. Okay, moving on playing two notes together. Okay, now we're into the fun stuff. We're going to be playing two note chords. So we're either going to be playing A and E together, E and D together, or E and B together. Let's get, make sure I'm in tune. I'll do. So, low notes with our thumb, high notes with our fingers. How do you play these two notes? Go, we can pinch them. Don't dig your fingers right into the strings. I don't want that horrible noise, I want this. Okay. A, E, E, A and E. E, B, B, E and E. E, B, B, E and B. A, E, E, A and E. Then play it again. Second line. 
happen again. All the high notes are either E or B, top space, middle line, and the low notes are either A, which is on two ledger lines down, or E, th below the third ledger line. Okay. Take it easy. No rush with that one. Okay, La Mancha. La Mancha is a, a place in Spain. Uh, that's all I know about it. So. Do that last line again. So, if at first, all the low notes are E, string six open, simple. So, with that in mind, just play all the high notes first. All right, the first bar, first line is pretty straightforward. It's open, fret one, fret three, fret one, open. So, open, one, three, one, open. Then you do the same thing, but on string two. All right. Once you get that in your head, pause, come back in a minute. I will draw it with the low notes, okay? So you know that. Right, now you're going to pinch your thumb with that as well. Okay. That is La Mancha's first line. Now the second line, that's something called a tie. Don't play the second note. It looks kind of like a smiley face between the two low E's like this. So, you pick the low E, and that low E should last for four beats, but it's tied to another semi-brief note, which also lasts for four beats. So it's an eight beat long note. Right. While you're doing that, though, the high notes are going to go all the way up to G on string one, then back down, and then you're going to go D, C, B, A, A, G, F on string four, fret three, E on string four, fret two, and then low E. So it's E, F, G, F, E, D, C, B, two A's, G, F, E. The low notes. So once again, you don't pick the second low E, you let the low E just ring out. Don't put your thumb back on it, that'll stop the string, won't it? Okay? Simple as that. Once again, take it slow, do it bit by bit. Learn the first four bars, learn the second four bars. Okay. Okay, now this next one is study, which says leave the bass note tight at first. So learn the melody. Uh, all the notes in this you should know, except for on the last line. I'll get to it in a minute. So it's C, C, B, B, D, D, C. Depending on how skilled you are and where you are in your learning journey, go slow, do two bars at a time. Get used to playing. Finger one, nothing. Finger three, finger one. It's all about moving around and getting that economy of movement between your fingers. Then you're going to go E, F. It's just finger one and open strings. You repeat that, then we move on. Next four bars. Last four bars. Here we go. E, E, F, F, G sharp. Okay, a sharp note is one fret higher than a natural note. So G would be fret three. But we're going to play two G sharps. You notice that there's a sharp in front of one of those G's and not the next one. And the sharp acts like a switch, which means in that bar, which is the last bar of the song, all the G's will be sharp because of that one G sharp. So you do two G sharps and you slide the same finger up to play fret five. Like that, okay. This is the whole piece with low notes. study. Don't rush through this to try and get to the next page. Think about um, making it sound really good. Right. Play it without the low notes first, learn the melody, then add the low notes in. 
Right? Don't be tempted to skip any songs. They're all important. They all lead to the next step. Right? It's a bit like climbing a set of stairs. After a while, if you're going two stairs at a time, you're going to run out of uh, energy, aren't you? I mean, you may even fall over. So that's a terrible analogy. Don't fall over the stairs. Be safe. Okay, Serenade. We're at the middle point in the book, as far as I'm concerned. Serenade is brilliant. Now, I'm going to play the whole thing for you. dynamics it starts off mezzo forte medium loud and it's got a crescendo on the next line and a diminuendo it's got some tied notes there's an e on the second line which lasts for six beats because it's tied to another e that lasts for six be uh, three beats uh, so yes play it slowly get the melody right Nice and light. Nice and soft. Slowing down. Okay, so. Now, uh, just pause the video right now and learn this. Four bars at a time, just the high notes, then add the low notes in. This piece should take you a little while to learn. Okay. Uh, once you've learnt it, every C in this can be played as a C sharp instead of fret one, fret two. And it sounds major, it'll sound happy. to go along with this you can play A minor and E major throughout the whole piece so if you want to go back in a minute and uh, strum these chords I'm going to teach you now while I was playing the um, first version of that A minor is played by holding a C and then you put your middle finger on the E which is string 4 fret 2 and then your third finger on the A which is string 3 fret 2 and you strum from string 5 down there's chord charts at the bottom of the page. We explain how to do it. It's like a picture of the guitar neck. See that? You hold your book up. You can see that's what it's like. All right. So A minor, E major is the same shape as A minor, but you move every finger up one string. So it's string three fret one, string five fret two, and string four fret two. Okay. Now, for reference, if there's a low E, oh, sorry, if there's a low A, the beginning of the bar, like the first bar. The first two bars, la, da, 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 then change to E major. Da, da, da. So A minor, so that's it. If there's a low A, you strum the A chord. If there's a low A, you strum the E chord. Lovely. So there's extra things you can do. So work on chords. The hardest part is changing chords. Maybe when you're first trying to play it, you just hold the A and you just strum when there's an A. Uh, if you can't change yet. But look, practice. Another way of changing chords really simply and easily is to do four strums on one chord. Now, a note on chord changes. When, when I first started playing, I literally had to do this with my hand and arrange the notes. So you might have to do the same. Go at your own speed, all right? I'm doing this as a very quick whistle-stop tour video that you can pause and play back and slow down as you need to. Okay, because I have so many books to cover, I can't afford to do individual videos for each lesson, unfortunately. Anyway, moving on to Gypsy Dance and Bass Notes, <clears throat> page eight. So we're going to learn E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F. 
They're in a big rectangle at the top of the page. E, F and G are on string six. Open fret one and fret three. A, B and C, we have already learned. Open fret two, fret three. And D, E, F, open fret two, fret three. Da, 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 da. Okay, so it's part of the Phrygian mode. Do, 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 Sounds very Spanish, and it can be exciting. Yeah, fun stuff. So a little warm-up is the uh, song 21, which goes E, F, G, F, E, and then middle E. Middle E is string 4, fret 2. Play that again. E, F, G, F, E, E. Then the next two uh, four bars go E, F, G, F, E. Sorry, I'll do that again. E, F, E, F, G, F, E. E, F, G, F, E. Change to your E chord. All right, if you're just coming straight to this lesson, I'll remind you of the E chord. String three, fret one. String five, fret two. String four, fret two. So. Gypsy dance. It's a tricky one. A lot of my students really struggle with this one. Okay, we're going to learn it a section at a time. First line. And in fact, I'm going to get you to do it without using any of the high notes. You're just going to use the low notes on these strings, on E, A, and D. So, the first nine notes follow the same nine notes at the top of the page. E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F. Then you go E for three beats. Then D, string four, open for three beats. Then F, string four, fret three for three beats. And then back to E. So the hard part is the E, D, F, E. Now I'm going to show you with the low notes. E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, E. D, F, E. Okay, now you'll notice that those last four low notes are all dotted minims. They're three beats long. So it goes E, high E twice, D, high E twice, F, high E twice, E, high E twice. So that those notes should all ring out. So you've got to be getting used to, say, playing an F and playing the high E. Don't accidentally touch the string with your palm of your hand as you're doing it, okay? Go s as slow as you want. Take it easy with this tune. First line, just memorise it. Work on it. Spend some time. Next line. E, D, C, D. So I'm unpacking that now. If you look at the book, it says two, zero, three. So it's just reminding you to use your middle finger to play fret two, middle E. Then you're going to play a D. Then you're going to play C, which is string five, fret three. And you go back to the D again. Then you play a high F twice. So it's E, D, C, D, F, F. Then you're going to go D, C, B, C. A lot of notes there. D, string four, open. C, string 5, fret 3, B, string 5, fret 2, and C, string 5, fret 3, so D, C, B, C, E, E. Now we're going to go through our notes all the way down. C, B, A, G, newish note, that one isn't it? L, O, F, string 6, fret 1, and then L, O, E, and then middle E. That's the next section done. I'll do it all again for you. E, D, C, D, D, C, B, C, C, B, A, G, F, E. Okay, now the next part, same as the first. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, seven bars. E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, E. last six bars are just E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, E, 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 It's a diminuendo. I'm getting quieter as I go through that. I'm going to just play the whole thing for you.
we're going to let that middle E ring out on that one. Beautiful song. Make it really expressive, okay? Don't rush through it, all right? You can, you know, learn it really fast, but I think it loses some of the feel. Okay, now we're gonna learn about sharps and natural. A sharp is shown by what we would know as a hashtag in front of a note, and it raises it by one semitone, or one fret. A sharp sign lasts for the whole bar, unless cancelled by a natural sign. Right, I've just read something straight from the book, so you have a look for your reference. First thing says 007, number 23. You're gonna play B two times, C two times. Then we're gonna do two C sharps, and then it cancels back to C. When it changes between a sharp and a natural note in a bar, it's called an accidental note, which is why it says that in that speech bubble, okay? Let's look at the chromatic scale. Chromatic scale goes up one step at a time. So it starts on G, and goes to G sharp, because that's one fret higher than G, right? A, then A sharp, fret three, one fret higher than A. B, C, you notice there's no B sharp. Mmm. There you go, no B sharp. It just goes straight to C. B, C, C sharp, fret two, D, fret three, pinky finger, or your little finger, fret four. Okay. So we're now going through and using our little finger. Those of you who thought you could get away with just using one finger so far, I'm afraid you're out of luck now, aren't you? Okay, E, F, F sharp, G. So chromatic scale, pause the video, learn these notes. G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, The worm, I love the worm. It's got a few little systems and sequences to learn, okay? So it starts off C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, 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 E. Now, if you look at the first two bars, it says one, two, three, four. It's actually a nice little guide. Just use finger one, two, three, and four. If you can't put them all on like I can, don't worry. Right, you will grow, your hands will stretch. Just do like this, hop. If you can't hold them all down, okay? C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, 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 E. Don't speed up those low E's. I see a lot of people doing this. C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, 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 E. No, all these notes are quaver notes, except for that high E. That's a minim, two beats long. But that should ring out one and two and like that underneath. Okay, so we do this section twice. C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, 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 E. C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. We start on G, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B. So it's zero, one, two, three, zero. E, E, E. Do it again. G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, 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 B. Right, got that idea? Okay. Right, then we just go back to the C. Right now the last line. This is where we go sharps and naturals, and we're going to ascend the chromatic scale and then descend. We're going to go up and down like a flight of stairs. C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, G, F sharp, F, E. Okay, so it's one, two, three, four, open. One, two, three, four, three, two, one, two, open. Like that. Okay. Put your thumb back on string six to produce the rest. So the worm, yeah. It's a very sequential, chromatic sounding piece. All right, I love it. Where are we going now? Scale of G major. All right, we're gonna learn about key signatures now. So it's got a picture of a key with a little sharp next to it. So if you look under where it says key signature, there's a little sharp note or hashtag in the top line. That's where the F note belongs. And what that tells us is that all Fs are sharp. So if we're playing something in the key of G, uh, any Fs we play should be played sharp unless we're told otherwise. All right, so the G major scale goes like this. G. A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, F sharp, E, D, C, B, A, G. Okay, now that is worth learning and committing to memory because that is one of the technical studies found in grade one. So it's worth learning. All right, we're going to look at dotted rhythms now. Dotted rhythms. Okay, so we learned dotted, uh, dotted minims last three beats. Well, a dotted crotchet last one and a half beats. It's hard to get across how to get that feel. That's the rhythm there uh, in the count and tap section. That's how we 
it goes. Right. The next piece was used famously in the Hovis Bread commercial. I'll play it for you. New World Theme by Dvorak. <laughs> Unpack that. B, D, D. So this is in two four. One, two. If I break that down into its component quaver note sections, one and two and first note is on beat one, and it lasts until it, uh, and then the second note, D, is on the and of beat two, and it's only a quaver. So it's got a little tail. The quaver notes. So the first note's a dotted crotchet, then it's followed by a quaver, followed by a minimum on the next bar. So that's where we get that rhythm. Bum, bum, bum. It's hard to get the, the feel for it, so what I suggest you do at this stage is just really feel the notes. B, D, D, B, A, G. All right, it's feeling it. What we call the weak beat. It's a syncopated note, that second note of the first bar. It's not on the beat. One, two, three, four, or whatever. It's one, two, and it's halfway between beats. Okay, try not to worry about it too much, just feel the rhythm. Just play it by ear, I would, at this stage. Next bit, two note chords, free stroke. We're gonna pick G and B with our fingers. We're gonna tuck first finger under G, second finger under B, and you're gonna pull them together, like that. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I'll play it without saying anything, because you can play New Old Theme along with this. There you go. So you should be able to play that along with the other one. It's just literally put one finger on the that string, one finger on that string for G and B. A and C, you're gonna put your first finger on the C, middle finger on the A, and then later on the second line, you've got a C and a G, and a D and a G. Okay, once again, pause it, think about the chords, play them, all right? Let's move on to second position study. So, these notes are in second position. They are Roman numerals II means second position in this. So my hand is going to be starting with fret one. No, my hand is going to be starting with finger one at fret two. There you go, that's better. So E, F sharp, G, A, A, G, F sharp, E, 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 D, E. Just practice that. suggest you really get used to playing those notes before you look at Drunken Sailor. Now Drunken Sailor is a lot of fun. I'm going to show it to you now. Here we go. Do you know it? 
I hope so. Here it goes, like this. What do you do with a drunken sailor? What do you do with a drunken sailor? What do you do with a drunken sailor? Early in the morning, heave ho and up she rises. Heave ho and up she rises. Heave ho and up she rises early in the morning. There's other verses, I don't know them, but that's how it goes. First two lines, stick to that, it's all on E. So it's E, 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 then Ace, A, C, E, then D, 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 G, B, D. Now we're going to get into second position, ready? E, 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 F sharp, G, A. Then you're going to go back to G, and then open for E, then D, then B, and then A. Alright, that's the first bit. Learn that before you do the second part. Second part is same notes but the rhythm changes now it looks really complicated one plus two plus three plus four plus what we're not doing maths we're doing guitar right it goes e, 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 a, C, e. now this is where i would actually rather you sang them sang it first before you played it he ho and up she rises your turn he ho and up she rises so that's that pattern e e e e oh, let's try again e e e e a c e But it's Sailor's Reel, which is an accompaniment to Drunken Sailor. Now, a lot of people find this really difficult, but I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll play the whole thing along, nice and slow. You can use it as an accompaniment for Drunken Sailor and see if you can play the melody along with it, okay? Mm. So again, we're doing chords A, A and C, or G, G and B. That's all you do. That's all you need to do. So there's only two different chords in here. It's A, 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 G, 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 A, 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 G, G, A. You get the idea? Have a go. Pause it. Learn it. It's a cool duet. What do you do with a drunken sailor? All right, now we're looking at flats. A flat is shown by a flat symbol. It looks like a B with a pointed bit at the bottom. So a flat is shown by a flat note in front of a note, and it lowers it by one fret or one semitone. A flat lasts for the whole bar unless cancelled by a natural sign. So they work like sharps, but they're the opposite of sharps. They're flats, right? Sharps go this way, flats go that way. So, we're going to be learning B flat on the third string and the fifth string. Okay, now, here's the thing. How do you take B, which is string two, an open string, how do you make that flat? We can't go lower than an open string, can we? So instead of going on that string somewhere lower, we go to a lower string in pitch. G, the G string, is lower in pitch to B, right? With me so far? So, that is why we go to fret three. String three, fret three. It actually says it on your book. There's a three in a circle, and it says two, three above it, and there's a little flat B flat there. All right. So blue scale. First thing I want you to learn: E G A B flat. New note. String three, fret three. B D E. Descending blade, uh, blue scale now. E D B B flat A G E. Sounds awesome. Dun, dun, dun. rhythm in there gives you that bluesy and you've got to do the blues face right oh yeah Whoa. yeah okay now the next line is the same notes but an octave lower okay B, G, A, B flat string five fret one B natural D E B D B B flat A G E I wasn't doing my blues face enough there let's try it again
Love it. Love the blue scale, right? Okay. Memorize the blue scale before you even think about night flight. Don't look at night flight. Okay, you can look at night flight. Night flight. I love night flight. Most of my students, when I perform that for them, go, that's a long song, isn't it, Pete? Yes. Yes, it is a long song, isn't it, Pete? Right. Let's look at the first line. High E, low E. High B, string two, low E. Same thing again. Get ready for B flat, string three, fret three, twice. Okay, move to A. Open, string three. G, middle E. Hold that, don't let go. E. Middle E again, E, E. It looks com complicated because there's a tied note, right, in the middle E. You only play two middle E's in that whole thing. So G, E, 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 E. I'll do that again. Duh. Got it? Good. Next bit is where we kind of ascend the scale. A, B, D, E. Right, A, B, D, and E, right? It's just the alphabet, but you've forgotten how to say C. Right, then it goes A, B, D, E, D, B, E, B. Slowly. A, B, D, E, D, B, low E, B. So it's just B, E, B, B flat, B flat, A, G, E, low E, three times. Okay, the next bit's very similar, but we're using the low notes. A, B, D, E, 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 E. B, D, E, 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 E. It's important that I remember as well to let that ring out. See the little coming out of the E? A, B, D, E, 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 E. A, B, D, E, 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 E. A, B, D, E, D, B, B, B flat. A, G, E. Then we go B, D, D sharp. Because that's what we call like the turnaround. Because the last line is exactly the same as the first line. You play it twice. The second time you play it, you build up the volume. Okay? That is night flight. That piece should take you at least a week of practicing every day to learn, if you're honest. But, you know, if you learn it quicker, then well done. You know, if it takes you a couple of weeks, that's okay too. Don't forget, go back in the book, look at your other books, play your other songs. Okay, you've all got bits in there. Be strict with yourself. Are you playing with the correct fingers with this hand? Are you playing with the correct fingers with this hand? playing it does it sound nice do they sound like this or do they sound like this yeah how are you getting on with that <clears throat> okay dotted rhythms in three four time okay see if you recognize this national anthem right god save the queen so i wasn't standing up when i played that sorry there's no guitar strap, so I had no choice. Right, Adagio.
okay. A couple of little notes weren't that great in that, but that's okay, look. This isn't meant to be one of those perfect videos. I'm running through the whole book without really editing too much. Here we go, Adagio. First four bars are in first position. So it's just C, 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 D, C, B, 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 C, 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 D, C, B, B, B. By now you've got to be good at going. If you're having trouble, change it between those notes quicker. Just pause it and have a go, all right? Next part is in third position. You notice how I was going C, 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 D, C. We're in third position, we're gonna be going D, and we're gonna to go to a new version of E, another E. How many E's are there on the guitar? Lots, don't have time in this video to tell you, but there are lots of E's. Okay, D, 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 E, D. So I'll do that again, string two, fret three, with your first finger, stretch up the fret five with your third finger. Because third position means your first finger lives on fret three. Second finger goes to fret four, Third finger goes to fret five. Fourth finger goes to fret six. Okay, think about that. Now there's a little diagonal slopey line next to the one on that D, and it leads us to the second line where we slope. We go down to fret one and go C, 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 like that. Okay, so that's D, 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 E, D, C, C, C. All right. Now we're going to do the third position bit. It goes E, E, A. Now we know high A. We've done it a few times in this book and once in the uh, first book. Third finger's on fret five. You play an A for two beats, then you slide your entire hand down using the same finger to play G, like that. So it goes E, I start in fifth, third position ready, even though I'm playing open strings. E, E, high A, slide down high G, three, four Fs in a row. F, 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 for one, two, three. Open E, D, C, B, A. So just down for the alphabet. D, C, B, A. Nice and quiet. B. The next bit is the same as the beginning. Third position. Third position. Last four bars. E, E, put your first finger on F sharp, we're in second position. Third finger goes to G sharp, and then pinky goes to A. Get a round in tando and go quieter. Okay. Um, yeah, then you can use the A minor, E chord, and the D minor. D minor, if you look at the same page as Serenade, I think it's page seven. D minor, an F note, an A note, and a D. So throughout this piece of music, you can strum an A chord where if there's an A note at the beginning, etc., etc. If there's a D, you do the D minor. So you've got time. There is always lots to practice. Don't tell people that you've done your practice. There's loads to do in this book. You can learn loads. You can really push yourself. Okay, we are on the home stretch of book two. How exciting. It just goes to show though, it just so happens that these are the hardest pieces to learn. First thing we're gonna do is London's Burning in fifth position, the V Roman numerals fret five. But before we play it, I'm gonna teach you those clouds at the top of the page. So cloud on the left are C and D. String number three, fret five, is C. String number three, fret seven, is D. Now you can write those underneath those clouds. If you want to write a five under the C and, and, a, and a seven under the D, just to remind you that it's fret five and fret seven. Use finger one and finger three. You've got to be really strict using the correct fingers with each fret. So look at the way my fingers are laid out. Five, six, seven, eight. Finger one, two, three, four. Okay, remember, we don't count the thumb. Finger one, two, three, four, like that. Okay, so C, D, and we're gonna to go to E which is string two, fret five, fret six is F, and little finger, G. C, D, E, F, G, F, E, D, C. So you can just fifth position, C major scale. Up to the fifth note anyway. So London's Burning uses those notes, also uses G, open string three. London's Burning, London's Burning, fetch the engines, fetch the engines. times through each bit. So open, fret five, open. Then we're gonna do this. This is tricky. I lay my third finger out ready to play the D. And my first finger is back here ready to go to catch that string. Like that. And the rest of it's all on this string now. 
high G. Nice and loud, accent that note. And then we're going to just go finger four, finger two, finger one. Finger four, two, one. All right, that is London's Burning in a nutshell. All right, symphony theme. A symphony theme by that Beethoven lad, isn't it? He was born in 1770, died 1827. Beethoven, sorry, Beethoven, of course, symphony. Here we go. Fifth position. So look, this is a way of testing if you know your C, D, E, F, G, like in the clouds at the top of the page. C, D, E, F, G. Do it in fifth position. A lot of people cheat, because it's possible to go. And so many of my students do it that I don't feel bad telling you that there's a cheat. Don't use it, okay? The point of this is to play a fifth position and to learn it. Because this leads us to our next one, which is Toccata. Yes, just take it in. Just, just, just take it in. Look at that. Look at that lovely, lovely song. All those notes. Does it look hard? It's not that bad. It's not as bad as it looks. You need to just know A, B, and C. High A, B, and C. Fret five, seven, and eight. If you want to write five, seven, and eight by A, B, and C underneath the chart at the top, just to remind yourself. Okay. Now what you're going to be doing is you're going to be walking fingers like this, and you're going to play a note. And then take your finger off and then go to the next note and take your finger off and then the next note okay so it's a b c b First two lines, crack that before you do anything else, okay? And in fact, do all of this without the low notes first, all right? I'm gonna play the whole thing through. Later on, all we're doing is uh, adding low notes in. Make sure you do eventually add the low notes in. If you don't do this with the low notes, you haven't done it properly, okay? It doesn't have to be fast either, by the way. It's just say, play it fast and make it exciting. Well, look, yes, speed is like the last thing we add when we're learning something, okay? We add skill and technique and the knowledge and the feel, and then we add speed, okay? Because when you start playing something fast, that's when you start making mistakes. There you go. mistakes there. Let's go for it nice and slow. I'm going to go from the third and fourth lines. Here we go. All right, just demonstrating speed isn't everything. It's made a lot better the second time around, didn't it? Okay, uh, I'm going to play the accompaniment for you. Give that a go. There's a glossary of terms at the end of the book and there's some scales. Lovely, lovely scales. Here we go. Let's go through the scales before we finish. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. It's D major scale. Aeolian mode. This is where we are on strings five, four, and three. G major.
A minor harmonic. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, G, F, G. Lovely. It's got G sharp in it. There. A minor melodic. Now, when the A minor melodic ascends, you play sharp F and sharp G. Then you go A, G natural, F natural. So it's one of the scales where it's not the same coming down as it is going up. Here we go. C major fifth position. Chromatic scale. mode, E to E. B, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. There you go. All right, so that is Guitarist Way, book two. I hope you've enjoyed that. There's a lot to unpack in there. Remember, don't rush through it. Play it. Enjoy it. Everything in there is worth learning slowly and properly. All right. Anyway, I look forward to seeing you in book three.